Are you faced with a collision repair and kind of on a budget? Find out how to stretch the dollar and get a better job than you would think. Now I will say that uh, the word budget may be misleading a little bit. You're still going to spend money on paint. Um, if you're looking to do a car with spray cans or um, you know, find magic in a can, this isn't the video for you. You're still going to be doing paint work and auto body work like you would, like any professional would. However, there are ways to be able to paint the car without having to repaint the entire vehicle. Most collision repairs like in this video here, a body shop, uh, any regular body shop, are is going to quote you to repaint the entire car. They're going to tell you that the paint can't be matched. It, uh, they're going to tell you a whole lot of things. It, it needs to be done. Or they're going to say, well, we can just paint the front clip and it's not going to match. It's going to look like crap. And it probably will because even if you get the exact match of paint due to sunlight, weathering, whatever the case may be, manufacturing differences, the paints are always a slight off and you can see it. So if you just shoot one panel on a car, even if it's from the same can of paint that the car was painted with originally, it still will look different. Most people don't realize that and not everybody can see that. I have an eye for it. I spot it right off the bat. But uh, that's one reason why when I paint a car in a paint booth, especially restoring an old car, I do not paint the doors one day and the hood the next and then put the, and then paint the body, the main body, body and then do the, put the car together. It, it can work and I see people do it, but I can tell the difference. I can see it's better to paint the car, especially if it's a metallic you are a pearl. You want to paint the whole car in, in flow. It, that way it looks like it was done factory. So watch the video, uh, see how I'm cutting the corners as far as you know saving materials and making a making a really professional nice job stretching out the dollar for this type of repair. Uh, and if you have any questions, please contact me through the comments here or go to my website, which I'll leave down in the description. Also, if you're interested in learning more about auto body and paint. Uh, I'm promoting a course. I use it and it's all in pretty much in all my auto body uh, type videos. I put down in the description. It's a course that's it's basically like a going to a, um, a class uh, like a college class. You're going to get uh, you're going to learn more than you'll ever will on how to do auto body work. Uh, enough that you can start doing it as a profession if that's what you want to do. You make money on the side or just do your own repairs. If you have a project it will teach you everything you need to know. The cost is extremely cheap for what you're getting. You get live support, community support. Uh, it's a no-brainer. If you're, if you're interested in doing auto body, take the course. Oftentimes, even if you have insurance on your car, you may rear in somebody or you may run off the road, break into a tree or whatever the case may be, and you're faced with having to shell out the money for the repairs on your car. Um, when it comes to frame damage like the one in this, in this video, you don't have much of a choice but to you know, just call around so you get the best price and make sure that you get somebody that actually knows how to bend them. There are frame shops that claim they can bend them and do a terrible job. And there's some that do really good jobs. So it's always good good idea to go to your parts store, uh, ask those parts guys, you know, if they know anybody that uh, they would trust or you know who's got the best reputation. Any pro shop like uh, Hot Rod Parts and stuff, any type of shop like that can help. But um, you do if you have frame damage, you know, it's going to be hard to get out of doing that. It would be hard to do yourself. But uh, in this video, this car has front end damage. The customer actually owns a mechanic shop and uh, he uh, went to pull apart and got uh, fenders, uh, front bumper, uh, let's see what else was it, the hood. And at the time he did this, fenders at pull apart were around 30 bucks. I think now fenders at pull apart and similar places like pull apart, I think pick apart in California. But um, those are now like $40, $42 a fender and nearly $60 for a hood. And I think that's a mistake because you can go to eBay, especially eBay, and get uh, aftermarket fenders and hoods for about the same price of free shipping. And you get new and uh, it should be undented and should just bolt right on. In this case, these both these fenders were dented. The hood had a dent in it. Uh, the front bumper had some... Uh, cracks in the very bottom where she couldn't really see it but uh, 
So it took a little bit of work to get it done, and this guy was a friend of mine, so I did it for a budget price. But when I got to doing it, I realized uh, the fact that I saved him some money because I didn't have to repaint the entire car. I went around and spruced up stuff on it, and I'm going to show you the steps I took in this. Um, I still painted, you know, blended on the car. I, I sanded the fenders, uh, fixed the body dents and stuff, and well, like I said, I'll be getting to it in the video here in a minute. Uh, but I sent it back onto the doors and then uh, blended back and um, that just saved from having to paint the rest of the top of the car, the, the back doors, the back quarters, the back of the trunk. But there is ways of doing budget repairs on a car without having to spend a, an arm and leg and uh, save you from having to buy another car and save you some cash. Let's go into the video. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of collision repair. We've got a 2001 Nissan Sentra. The owner, he actually owns a, a automotive mechanic shop, and his boys went and found a hood and uh, two front fenders and bought a radiator support and took it to the frame machine because it was this frame rail was bent, so the uh, uh, frame shop actually welded the uh, radiator support in, saving me the trouble. They said they tacked it in, but when I went and looked, every place is supposed to be welded as well, so saved me the time. You can see like this fender here has got. Uh, I move around you might see it's got a dent there uh, this fender over here has got uh, see the big dents right there above the wheel well I've got to take those fix those I'm probably gonna go around the car I'm not painting the old car I'm just gonna kind of spruce it up but the mirrors are flat uh, the door if I back up in the right lighting Somebody has reshot this car at one point or did some sort of blend work, but uh, I don't know if the camera's actually catching that, but it's just got this huge run right there, a dent there. And then I went in and took the uh, rocker panel or the part of the ground effects piece off, but it's got rust here, rust down through there, and the bottom of that door has a little bit of rust, so I'm going to fix that. And uh, Kind of just spruce it up a little bit and get rid of this rust and make the car look a little bit better. Okay, with body work. With the fender still being somewhat shiny, I can find dents in it, but to, to, just to see what I'm dealing with, I used a flat right here. That's what I used. I used a paint stick with a piece of 100 grit sandpaper on it. Just did it dry, ran over the area, and you can see that this, it didn't touch this, so that's my dip. So I'm going to try to come in behind and work it out a little bit and then run back over with the sandpaper until most of it's gone. Then I'll have to fill it. Um, I've already went ahead and put uh, some Everglass, which is um, basically fiberglass, but it uh, doesn't have all the heavy strands of uh, fiberglass in it. Uh, in some of the deeper dents, there's two here, one on this one and one here. Uh, I couldn't get in behind it without pulling the fender back off. And... I could use a stud gun and pull it up, but I didn't want to drag all that out, not for the this budget job. And I found three spots here, and, and you can see that they're shiny. So that's my lows. So I'm going to try to come behind them and work them out. Okay, I tapped that out. And you can see it just got a real small low right there. Uh, of course, I haven't, you know, if I sanded more, I could probably sand it out, but. Uh, but the point of it is, and I kind of worked that out too, got this uh, dent gone, created a little high, but I knocked it back down. Those I couldn't get behind because of the firewall. I tapped them out a little bit. But uh, either way, all these are going to take just a real uh, thin skim of body filler to make it waveless. And that's what you want. You don't want to fill, you know, two inches up of a dent or anything like that or build out a Bondo, so. The back bumper had a scrape in it pretty good so I DA some of that out. I got to DA the whole back bumper with 400. It's uh, inside of that door right there's got a little bit of rust on just the very bottom edge and I've uh, wire brushed on the back side and neutralized it with the rust uh, converter, rust to primer converter. I've got to sand this rocker panel and same thing neutralize that rust and repaint it. There's a dent in that door. I'm going to try to pull it out without having to really do much work to it. Then I've got this fender that I've 
found some lows and stuff I've got to work on. Same here, I found a few lows. I've just put a mild uh, skim of uh, body fill on it just to kind of see what I'm dealing with. And then uh, the bottom of the front bumper was split, so I used some uh, rubber bumper repair, epoxy type stuff to fix that with. More on the inside. And there's some rust spots right there under the spooler. I'm going to try to just see if I can't get rid of that or neutralize it without having to repaint the whole trunk. After DA or using a dual action sander, you can use a, a pneumatic or an, or an electric either one. And I'll put put those down in the description of the type of tools I've used. Uh, after using that all over the front clip that uh, I put on, I, um, and working the body filler stuff, then I'll go ahead and wet sand. I usually wet sand on it regardless if I use primer or not, just because it you know creates a slicker surface. <clears throat> but um, in this case here, I will not be priming the entire car or the uh, entire uh, front clip, mostly because I'm trying to cut back on materials used, and um, and in this case, the customer doesn't want to spend the money on a urethane primer, so I'm only priming the areas that I've actually filled or may have damage to them. So wet sanding helps smooth things out. So uh, in this case here, I'm wet sanding everything out with a uh, 320 grit, and then uh, once I prime the areas. Then I'll um, go back over after the primer cures out. So I'll go back over with the 400 grit to give it a final slick. Here I'm wet sanding with a little uh, rubber block. I call them a squeegee block. I'll, I'll put that also down in the description. It's smaller so that I can actually ride these curves better. Uh, and I'm sanding with 400 grit to slick the fender up. Um, my process has always been to be able to, you know, work fillers and maybe damaged areas with a rougher sandpaper, you know, but I always try to stay finer. A lot of people will use something as rough as 36 to 40 grit. When you cut those kind of scratches, it's hard to remove them. So uh, my method is always to, you know, to work my way into a finer paper and you get a, a slicker finish and it paints those sticks. As long as you've got a 400 grit scratch on a surface, paints, sealers, anything like that will stick. Now when it comes down to actually doing the paint job, I didn't catch that on the video and I'm sorry about that. I actually tried. I've got a few videos where I don't show the paint work and that's because the first time I attempted it, my camera, which isn't this camera, just sucked that paint to the lens like a magnet and it took me a long time to get the uh, overspray off the lens. So that video didn't work and that almost messed up my camera. And um, then I tried it again and it did mess up the camera to where I couldn't uh, use the camera anymore. It was getting old anyways. So I will do, I will show you in some demonstrations here 
on how I actually blended back on the doors because a lot of people don't have a misconception of what it, paint blending is and I'll show you. In this case this door had lots of runs in it from a previous paint job and looked really horrible. So I had to remove the pinstriping and sand the door down, uh, sand the runs out of it and stuff. And then uh, when I painted the front end I just come back and this is a base coat clear coat so with the base coat I just come back a little bit under the door uh, each coat that I made on the, the hood and the fender and I just come back on the door just a little bit at a time and that actually blends the color together to where you can't tell and you just clear it and, and it's done but uh, I'll show you some demonstrations how for this demonstration I'm using a red 2001 Centro or a picture of one and what the, the method I would use is a, I would paint the front clip obviously in this video the front end needs to be uh, painted so I paint the front end with with the white base coat and then from there I'm going to start blending back on the door every time I put a coat on the front end so basically I coat the front end and I usually unless I'm doing a, a hardcore color change or something it usually takes about three coats of the base coat and then uh, the clear but in this case we're going to put the base coat on the front end and every time that I um, put the coat on I would fan it back across the door. As you can see in this image I have now come back on the door a little bit and it doesn't have to be an exact straight edge you're just fanning back basically splashing a little bit onto the door. I didn't include the rocker panel although you would normally include the rocker panel and even uh, possibly up that pillar Although usually the pillars, the way they go in behind the fender, you can get away with uh, uh, just the color offset. But for the door and the fender to match, you have to kind of splash back a little bit. Now, as you can see here, by the third coat, I've come back on the door just a little bit more. Uh, and I didn't take my third coat all the way to that edge. And then keep in mind, every time you come on, you just kind of feathering back the, the spray. You're not trying to spray solid and then stop. You just kind of throw your paint out. So you throw it out about that far right there. I usually like to go ahead and fan back just a little bit more on the door at the very end. And what I mean by fanning is like at the front of the, the, front of the door you're, you're spraying but then you lighten up and don't move the gun towards the end of the door just turn the gun and kind of point that way and kind of just like fan fan your hand out and all you're doing is just splashing the paint or misting it onto the door basically misting is probably better than saying than splashing it but you mist it out and it doesn't always have to be three quarters of the door it could be about half half to three quarters and once you clear this then uh, you won't be able to tell that uh, that it wasn't all painted the same color. And as you can see, after it's been cleared, of course the car's already put together and everything here, but after it's been cleared, you can't tell that uh, that the whole thing wasn't painted. And as you can see on this side, I, I did the same thing. I blended from the fender back onto the door and it matches perfectly. You can't tell from what to where what was stopped where it started and you can also see that this job turned out really nice I, it looks like the whole car has been repainted and what all I did was like just paint the parts that needed to be painted um, I used two coats of clear um, like I said you saw the some of the body work that went into it it took two quarts of clear to do this whole job whereas if you did the overall job you would have probably had to buy it well, you would have bought a gallon which would have been around $140, $150. I think you get clear kits. Um, every part was from used. Like I said, though, with the pro way prices are now, to, to stretch that dollar, get, save your budget, might looking on eBay and some other places. Everybody swears up and down Rock Auto is the best place in the whole wide world to buy parts, especially body parts, because you can buy fenders from anywhere from $18 to $25. But what you fail to see is they do not get free shipping so if you buy a fender from Rock Auto plan on spending forty to fifty dollars in shipping so you go to eBay you can buy a fender for forty five dollars free shipping 
It's a no-brainer. But uh, and they're all there's only a few manufacturers that make aftermarket parts anyhow. Although it doesn't hurt to check in your local area. I will put some links down in the descriptions for places that you can buy uh, aftermarket body parts from. And like I said, and also just recommend you know looking on eBay if you want to try to save some bucks. I also wanted to point out how I got rid of the rust around that uh, spoiler where it went. It wasn't, it was just basically surface rust. It had like um, just, just rust that was just on top of the paint. It came from underneath, but it was, you know, basically on top of the paint. So it was easy to sand off. I took, um, I'm trying to think what I, I think I took like 180 and went around and knocked off the rust. And then I used a rust converter spray. And again, I'll put these chemicals down in the description for you to be able to use them. But uh, I knocked that off, sprayed that on. I taped off. Uh, the trunk right there at the um, pinstriping and just masked off my little area around that worked it out, sprayed the converter on it then just lightly sanded it and then just misted white paint in then just misted the clear in a little bit and buffed, kind of rubbed it into it once after it cured up and dried I kind of rubbed and buffed right in that area and you, I mean if you really wanted to look for it you could but at first glance you can't tell Sadly, I don't always get to show every step of the way of when I do these vehicles. These are actual live customer cars, and I'm actually on the clock, so it's kind of hard for me to just stop what I'm doing, gear up, because uh, some quite often I'm working on more than one vehicle. I'm not just working on one at a time, even though it doesn't. You don't really see those, but um, I'm usually in a rush. So I, if I do miss steps, I do try to go back over my videos on how to to do them. And if you're not really clear. Be sure just to you know contact me, and I will do my best to get you some videos or images or whatever it takes to explain it to you. Because I'm these videos here to help you. So as you can see in this video, the way I cut corners is I didn't use a full gallon of clear. I uh, used one quart of base coat. Because you got to keep in mind that your base coats come with a, a reducer to go with it, so that usually turns it into about a quart and a half uh, or maybe a little more but um, then the clear comes with an activator which makes a little bit more than in this case a little more than two quarts but um, so I stretched the material out by using less as well I uh, used uh, masking tape you can buy from Walmart I didn't buy the most expensive masking tape I used newspaper uh, I always use trash bags for covering the wheels but um, and then just went around and fixed up spots like that did a buff job and the whole car looks like it was repainted and like I said any regular body shop would charge you for a complete paint job charge you for the rust repair um, so this is how you can do a collision repair on a budget also be sure to look down in the description for a link that I'm providing to a ebook that I wrote uh, auto body repair guide and tips it's selling for $4.99 on Amazon but for you watching this video look down in the description, go to the link, and uh, you can get the book for free. Um, it's got a lot of great tips on how to mask, um, things you need to know about rust. It, I, I include all the chemicals it requires to get rid of rust, all the tools, or maybe tools in there that you didn't know existed, which would make, make a big help. But it's a great book, I'm proud of it, so be sure to look down there in the description and, and get your free ebook. So I hope you found this video helpful. And uh, if not, please leave me a comment. Uh, and you can always go to my website and contact me there because I'll answer questions and I don't charge for it. So just uh, contact me and I'll help you the best way I can. But if you did like this uh, video, be sure to like and subscribe and keep watch for the next video because I'm always involved in some sort of weird project. Thanks for watching.